Hi everyone, welcome to Cash Hawks. Today we're down at Devonport and we're going to do an adventure lab. Come and have a look around this wonderful old seaside suburb. It's a beautiful place and there are lots of interesting things to see. Devonport hosts the Royal New Zealand Navy, the main facility for the country's naval vessels, but it's best known for its heritage charm. We're heading into Devonport to pick up two e-bikes for the day's searching for the Adventure Lab locations. An e-bike is a great way to explore Devonport, complete the Adventure Lab and find geocaches hidden here. There we are. Found the little bike shop here. And we'll pick up our bike. Ready for our ride today. Okay, there's one bike. Woohoo! Excellent. Hey, hop on and see whether it fits you, Glenn. <laughs> that seem comfortable? It's not too bad. Oh, good. Okay, that's my one. Your one? Good. Whoops. What do you think? They were just trying it. Oh, I think the seat's a bit high for me. Yep. Might oh, have well. to lower it down a bit, hey. We can correct that. That's yep. good. That's good. <clears throat> yeah, off on your first ride. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going? I think it I think it's too low. Okay. Like I think I thought you were um just need the seat to go up a bit, do yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? Uh, actually, I think it might, might be a bit big. You can big. take from the back. Oh, okay. Yeah. You have gears on this can. Yeah. You can twist backward, and the bike is going to be really light to move. You can twist forward, and it's going to be more heavy to ride. Okay. So, you have here the front brake, yeah. rear brake, and to turn it on, you hold this button yeah. three seconds. Bigger number is more power coming from motor. So okay. if you are going uphill, number nine is going to be your best friend. Okay. Then if you are riding with the traffic, you mm -hmm. just pull on three, two. All set, let's head out to the naval base to begin the adventure lab. Our first obstacle. A bin being moved and an oncoming car. A little wobbly at first, but we soon settle into the ride. I think there's a geocache over on the right, Lynn. Yeah, that was that was hard to find, wasn't it? It was. Whoa! Put it down to one. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. <laughs> it kind of surges. Good, eh? Quite a lot of power when it kicks in. Yeah. Okay, we're coming up to the naval base. Whoa. <laughs> That's a naval base, entrance way. Okay, this is the start of the adventure lab. It's, uh, it's about Devonport, where we are at the moment, we're at the start of it. It's got here a uh, suburb closely linked with the Royal New Zealand Navy. And we're starting here at the naval base and we're going right along to the museum, which isn't too far away, is it? But there's no. a few stops on the way, be Could fun. Be. Should be a nice ride. Let's first look at some of the interesting things at the entrance. There's the director of control tower and gun turret off HMNZS Achilles, a Leander class light cruiser, famous for its role in the Battle of the River Plate during the Second World War. Just heading down to look at this mine that they've got here on display. 
remember my dad, uh, one of his jobs during World War II was to blow these things up. He was on a minesweeper off the coast. There's also a traditional geocache nearby. We're in luck there are some naval vessels at the base. Looks like something important is happening today. Now let's start the adventure lab. Okay, which, which city provided this memorial rock? Okay, it's a Korean War Memorial. Yes. So which city in Korea? Ooh, I'm going to put that in. Okay. Submit. Yep. Yay! Yay! Okay, on to the next one. Yes. Beautiful day along here in the sunshine. Here's the Devonport Wharf where the ferries come in from Auckland. Here's one of these uh, whale tails coming up in front of us. Artists have done and they've spread them out all over Auckland. So we'll just have a quick stop here and have a look at this one. Woohoo! Oh, this looks good. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. Look at the colours in it. Okay, let's push on. Ooh, that motor kicks in. Along we go here, past the uh, ferry building, the ferry wharf. The next location is out on the wharf here. Make a little detour, head out onto the wharf, and answer the next question. The next question is that the sculpture of the seagulls or gannets or yeah, they look like gannets maybe. A few people fishing here, so we'll just um, pull over and answer the next question. There are the birds. Right, at this stop we've got to decide what birds are on the sculpture. And we've got a choice of seagulls, herons, albatrosses or oyster catchers. Oh, we know it's not an oyster catcher. No, we, we know these birds. Yep. Are right, they? Yippee! Hey, we've got it right. Are right, they? Continue. Good. Go on our way. Okay, let's move. Right off to the next one. <laughs> It's pretty easy um, riding along here with these. It's so flat. Okay, here we are at the next one. Now we're at the time capsule. And it says the time capsule was placed here to commemorate the 100th anniversary of Devonport Borough Council. Okay, good. And well, what's the, the question we have to Question ask? is, which year will it be when the time capsule can be opened? Okay, I can see the answer, it's down the bottom, but I'm not going to tell you guys. <laughs> you have to come and look for yourself. Okay, put it in. Okay. Got it. Onward we go. Nice smelling the sea, the sea air here. Hello. Looks like an interesting little plant coming up. Might stop and have a look at that one. Maybe worth looking at. Here's an extra for anyone following the uh, Adventure Lab. It's an execution site, a bit unusual for New Zealand with these things. Anyway, this is the site of the murder of the Snow family in 1848 and subsequent public execution of the murderer, Joseph Burns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Apparently it was uh, in the papers for, for months. It was oh. a big deal here back then. It would have been. Yeah. Yes, it would have been. Public execution though, I can't say there'd be too many of those. Oh, not in New Zealand, that's no. not. Mm. On to the next one. We are passing the Yacht Club. In winter, 
The yachts are up on the hard, having their hulls cleaned and general maintenance. None here today, as it's summer and they're all out sailing. Wow, I just love those Budokawa trees. We've just come through and we're coming up to the next waypoint by this clock here. Nice flowers. Okay, let's pull in here and we'll see what the question is. Lovely old clock here. There's a big plaque on it. So we'll go and have a look and see what it says. Now this memorial is in remembrance of Alexandra Watson, whose generous bequest enabled the seawall along the foreshore to be erected. Oh, that's good, because that's mm. where we've been pedalling, really, along, along yeah. the seawall, along the top of it. Oh, cool. Now, what's the question? Here's the question for the Adventure Lab. In which year was the wall finally here removed? Okay, mm. so it's not about the clock then. It's not. Okay, let's I see think what's around there. I can see another plaque around here. Let's go and have a look. Okay, what's the name of the wharf that was here, Lynn? Ah, Devonport Wharf, also known as Duda's Wharf. Okay, here we are. In which year was the wharf here finally removed? Okay, when did Duda's Wharf go? Um, oh, right. on the sign on the park. <laughs> we got it. Yes. Good. On to the next one. Yes. Hold on. Lynn, we have a look. This stone memorial commemorates the landing of the Tainui voyaging canoe, believed to have arrived here sometime in the mid 14th century. On to the last waypoint. So we're going to go to the museum for the Navy and have something to eat, something to drink. Getting near the end of it now, Lynn. Yes. Here we are, Naval Museum. All right, the last question is just here at this Naval Mast. So we'll have a look here and get the answer. the white ensign at the top for the Navy. Well the question is where was the naval mast relocated from? So we'll put it in. Yay! <laughs> Lynn's just looking for her mask because we're going to go into the museum. So just putting our mask on to go in there. Ah, found it. Oh, good. <laughs> right, let's go. Hey. Okay. This is a nice cafe. We're going to have a cup of coffee and something nice to eat. But we're going to have a quick look through the museum first. Is there a hand sanitizer? The museum's free, but you can make a donation before going in. Oh, nice little museum, Lynn. Mmm. Yeah, nice model here. It's very nice. Oh. Look at that. A chunk of armour knocked off New Zealand's turret during the Battle of Jutland. Is a model of the Harbour Defence motor launch like the one my father served on during World War II. 
There's a display here about HMS Neptune, which was sunk in the Mediterranean during the Second World War, and my dad's cousin James Coop was on board, and unfortunately he lost his life. I think only one person survived the sinking. And there he is, just down over there. HMS Neptune sunk by mines in the Mediterranean during World War II, killing 737 crew members. 150 were New Zealand sailors like James. Yeah, Hegel Seaman James Coote. Jim to his family. Let's see what's in here. Oh, some old telephones. Oh, this looks interesting. It says Neptune calling. On the 13th of November 1941, Arch Curry from the New Zealand National Broadcasting Service visited HMS Nitch, Neptune in the port of Alexandra, Egypt. Yeah, and recorded some of the crew sending short messages of greetings back to loved ones. That's interesting. James, Jim, uh, didn't actually speak, but a friend of his mentioned him. So it's quite cool sitting here listening to it. Let's have a listen. Hello, Mum and Dad. Hope you're well. To you, Pat, my love. Frank, Mari, young Ross, Dorothy and Graham, the best. Would I were with you all. Remember me to the friends I haven't time to mention. Love, Ross. To you, Mrs. Coote, Jim sends his best. <laughs> quite cool to hear that. Nice little display. Anyway, let's head on. Oh, I think that carrot cake looks nice, Lynn. <laughs> I'm after the ginger crunch, I think. Oh, nice. Oh, the chocolate caramel looks nice, Ooh, too. Oh, it does do. Um, could we have a piece of carrot cake? Yeah. A ginger crunch? Yeah. And two coffees, one cappuccino with chocolate. Yeah, me. Okay, you've got a ginger crunch? Yes. And I've got carrot cake. Yum. This is very hard. <laughs> oh, a bit of cream. <laughs> nice. It's been ages since we've had ginger crunch. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, and nice. carrot cake, it's lovely. Yeah. Nice treat after our adventure lab. Yeah. <laughs> it's on to the Devonport Museum to find out about strange grave markers found in the area by local historian Paul Titchener. I remember years ago reading an article he wrote for a local newspaper about his research into these. Here we are at Devonport Museum. It's an old church that was moved here. And we'll go and have a look. lovely little museum here so we're just going over to see where these grave markers are located and they're in this cabinet here the museum's kindly opened up the cabinet and allowed us to take out these um, grave markers they are glazed pottery and they have a cross and a number on them and these were found under the houses along um, Torpedo Bay along where we were walking and I believe that one was found um, down out on the foreshore at some point. So a very quirky bit of history here. Paul showed us two of the markers he found. He believes that during the building of the Calliope dry dock in the Devonport Naval Base, they used steel which came from the Crimean battlefields and was loaded onto a ship at Sebastopol together with a quantity of ballast, rock and rubble. The area along the beach was used as a ballast dumping area for rocks and other material used as ballast by early ships. A British researcher identified them as grave markers made for the British Army and said one had been allocated to a soldier who had been wounded in the Crimean War. He had his leg amputated but died of a subsequent infection. Along with the markers, Paul found human bones, including a leg bone with saw marks from an amputation. This brought to mind the work of Florence Nightingale. We should note, however, that the museum label doesn't mention the Crimea, as they believe they are locally made grave markers. 
Ceramic markers are mentioned in an old newspaper article and have been found elsewhere. They also cannot find evidence of metal from the Crimea being used here. Whatever the truth, it left us puzzled on our ride back. How did grave markers and human bones end up on the foreshore here when there is no graveyard nearby? Uh, where do we go? Straight across, down to the to the left or right? Left. I want to go down past the War Memorial, so stop at the War Memorial. We are passing the Devonport Library, heading to the War Memorial. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Well, that brings us to the end of our cash walk. We hope you enjoyed the Venture Lab as much as we did. It's a really beautiful and interesting place. Mm. And although we were on e-bikes, you could easily walk it. It wasn't uh, necessary to be on the bikes, although it was fun. <laughs> we have a cash walk coming up uh, down in Otago and we're doing a long journey on e-bikes and we wanted to just um, give it a bit of a go so we knew what they were like. Anyway, thanks for watching. And don't forget to go geocaching.